So, welcome Ronald. We are happy to welcome you. Yes. In a beautiful environment. In Bruges. Yesterday, you gave a beautiful lecture. A fascinating yes. lecture. Before a full house. Yeah, it was enormous. And the people were very pleased. Oh yeah. And Absolutely. We are happy to get to know you better. We have already heard a lot about you. And your work through the videos. Hmm? But we also enjoy getting to know you a little better personally. Yesterday you explained very beautifully how the project has been originated. I talked yeah. about Luther, who had a dream. I dream. And you said, well, it was different in my case. Yes. I will let you know. Yeah. And now, I realize, for you, it wasn't a dream. But rather, yeah. a task. But of course I understood the metaphor very well. Because what Martin Luther King has very powerfully manifested therewith. I have a dream. Of course, he was a visionary. He saw a world of peace. He saw everything possible. So in that sense I got it very well. But I wanted to make it a bit humorous by saying, No. When we dream, in a normal sense it means that we are sleeping. So then, this will mean that we are sleeping. And within that sleep, you can have dreams. Fantastic dreams that make you experience the most impossible things. Right. You can suddenly fly. You can do anything. But I responded with a bit of humor like, no, no, we no longer sleep in that sense. But of course, we also have that dream, that dream of Martin Luther King. We have now, in that sense, given shape to that. Yeah, yeah. That is what we also showed in yesterday's lecture, right? Yes. Like, boys, how can we together create a world of well-being and welfare, but above all create peace with each other? Because so far... If we'll leave it to the others? No. Right? Whatever we vote for, well, that's it. Yeah, yeah. But actually, it is your better half, your wife, that challenged you to start this project. Yes, I did indeed bring that up yesterday. Very good of you to cite that piece. That was indeed mm, in 2009. We had known each other for a number of years. Yeah. And it was the first time I really entered into a relationship with a partner. Before it was not really an issue. And because we had withdrawn into the pure untouched nature. In the phase she had also become pregnant. Then at a certain moment, yes, it will center itself around, around that belly. The new life that arises. That's a really nice process. And then came into that. I'll never forget it because we were standing with a view over the valleys. And in that she really came with her hands on her belly because it was already quite a pregnancy. So she had her hands on her belly. And then she asked me, looking at the splendor of nature, that serene. She says, how can we fundamentally change this world? I'm using my own words now. But that's what it came down to. How can we fundamentally change him so we can create a future for our child? Mm. But also for all children who are and will be coming. Yes. And, and then she asked, how are we going to do that? And yes, I said, then we have to tackle the financial system. Uh -huh. That is the head of the snake. That is the root of all misery. The head of the snake. The head of the snake. Because whatever you come up with in terms of beautiful initiatives, wonderful initiatives, hmm. promising initiatives, as long as you don't tackle the financial system, you won't tackle the head of the snake. Yeah, yeah. Because through the money, through the power structures of the financial system, we now also have this scenery that we are all looking at now. Hmm. And we've been looking at for a long time. Mm. And we are not happy about it. Mm. And we see our children being sacrificed through the battlefield. Now again to Ukraine, Russia, and everyone else involved. And that is only one war because it is constant war. So that's what she asked. And I said through the financial system. I said, but I'm not going to do that. How so? 
I come from that financial system. She knew that from day one, because when I met her, I immediately told her all of the dirty parts of my life. Whoosh. Just like that. And a lot was unreal to her. Like, am I in a movie now? Because normally you see all that in a movie, and I came to tell that as my life experience. Mm -hmm. Right. But I thought she should know the baggage before she started with me. I see. Because we could expect anything with me. Hmm. So she knew about that. And I said, I'm not going to do that. How so? I promised never to go into the financial system again. To which she said, yes, but wait a minute. Did you promise that to anyone? No, to myself. Well, she said, I know you are as good as your word. If you say something, then you do it. That's what you stand for. That's one of the reasons why she fell for me and, me and still loves me because I am a man as good as my word. Mm -hmm. Yes, a lot of people just don't stick to anything anymore. Not even in their words. She fell for it because she encountered it so little. So I said, I still find it difficult to break my promise, even if it is to myself. Yeah, but actually, you are defending another system. So... Well, what she... Hmm? brought up was but wait a minute breaking a promise to yourself doesn't hurt anyone would you maybe hurt yourself in that but the reason you give yourself for that is can you do it for the children mm -hmm. yes then she had me mm -hmm. for the children i myself have had bad experiences from birth children are sacred in that sense children are the future that's what we want to do it for. That was, so to speak, the only reason you could come up with to take me anywhere. Mm -hmm. Being the child, and then I'm not just talking about being a physical child until the age of 20. I'm also talking about the child that always remains within mm -hmm. you, the inner child. Because the child will redraw in proportion as he is being programmed within society, withdraws further and further out of protection. With me it was that far that it was locked in the deepest of the deepest, in a bunker, an atomic bunker. So I knew very well what this was about, and yes, I was really like, this is all worth it. To someone else maybe a futility, but for me it was a tough decision to break the vow to myself. So I broke a vow once in my life and it was to myself, but it's all worth it. Because I'm doing it for the children. Yes, super. Super, Ronald. That you, your whole being. Ah, uh, your capacities, your talents. Everything you've been through. Everything. You're putting your energy into the project. Yes, that's what you're saying, of course. To convince me even more, she also stated the following. Everything you did in your first life as a top criminal, as a bankster in the financial system, all the things you did to the core, she said, you can also turn that all around for the mm -hmm. better. And I kept thinking, never again, never again, because I know what it is. Yeah. She said, you can turn everything for the mm -hmm. better. And, and those arguments together were really whoosh. You fell through. Yes, it was no different so then we came in him. Because she wanted to give birth in the vicinity of her family so we eventually went from the south of Europe to the Netherlands temporarily and, and at that moment I started very disciplined. The first baby was born and the second child was due to be born so I had to, so to say, write new blueprints for a new financial system which we are still in the middle of developing now. Yeah. But it's actually a little child. We suddenly had two children. A third yeah. was added later. Also a physical one. So then we had three children as a family. And luckily it is now of course divided among many volunteers yeah. worldwide who also contribute. Yeah. But the early years, boy oh boy. So, that child is a teenager. Yeah, luckily it is. Luckily. It runs perfectly with our two physical children. Yeah. It runs perfectly and is slowly entering puberty. Okay. Well, that would 
a big blow in this world soon. Puberty is heard, is seen. It's also a bit rebellious, actually. Often an adolescent is very open to new things that have never been done. Well, it's like a teenager. Here you are. We are going through puberty, right? With the bee of joy. Absolute. But we still need those fathers and mothers, worldwide, yeah. to manage yeah, that yeah. adolescent. Otherwise, it will go in a direction we may not want. Nice. Right. Beautiful, isn't it? Um, that kind of project that you watch growing. Later on, we can dive into that more. But, um, you also have, um, an experience, an almost dead experience. Yes, that's what they call it. Yeah, that's how they call it. Are you okay to tell a bit more about this? Or is it difficult? Not at all. No, well, no. I find this a lot easier because in retrospect it has brought something very positive. There are also parts of my life testimony that are quite difficult. But... I won't go too far back in the past. I can tell you that at a certain point, at the end of my career, I started not functioning properly anymore. Then I had all kinds of treatments for six days that were also a contractual consequence of the non-functioning. In other interviews, one can completely figure out what happened via clips, which are on YouTube. But in the end attention, the pressure, the stress, and the exhaustion. While I was still young, I was 32. It was in 1994. It has accumulated so much, and the assignments I had in it, and those mm -hmm. tensions that I had a heart failure. And luckily I was in a city on assignment at the time, so I was helped very quickly. Later they said, Somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes. My mother said about 12 minutes, I think. I don't know exactly how long I was actually clinically dead, or whatever. I did not have that experience because the light went out so to speak, and suddenly I saw that they were busy with me. But literally, I saw my hands. I couldn't look in a mirror, but I did see my body, and I saw them working there and I completely lost my mind. That was not possible at all. You can't comprehend that either. But before I knew, in a fraction of a second or so, that image was gone, and I ended up on what, what I call Earth. I recognized nature. However, it was strange in the sense that the nature I was experiencing now, you see, before that time, Look, I was not a Satanist as a profession, but still very much associated with Satanism. Because that was a line that really appealed to me because that was anti-life and nature that to me could all be destroyed. I was a hater of life, and I had no connection with nature at all, and all of a sudden I'm put into an experience that I could actually experience nature. I became one with nature, I could see, right through, all matter so like glass, but it was also solid and immaterial. But I could also experience the emotion, the emotional side of nature. So I was able to truly connect with something I had never experienced before. And that was at the moment that you went back into your body. No, no, I wasn't there. Ah, oh, I see. At that moment you gone. still was. Above your body. Well, I don't know where I was. I was on Earth. I now call wow. it the new Earth. I call it the Earth now, because then when I look here, despite all the splendor of nature, it is a poor substitute. It is almost dead compared to the experience I had. I got a real experience with nature. I made a real connection. Um, sometimes with the evening light, the light shines through the grass, and then you see very subtly what I'm talking about. Then it starts to glow. It looks like you can see through it a bit. That's a bit of an explanation to understand what I'm talking about. Because it's already hard enough how to explain everything I'm talking about. That was one piece I experienced. 
still seeing in that flash of the body, not understanding what is happening and push, leaving. So I'm not doing a lot of research about what I actually experienced because I didn't believe in anything. And then I came across many stories, quite a lot testimonies of near-death experiences that made it a phenomenon, so I started calling it a near-death experience as well. Then they all talked about a tunnel or something. Well, I didn't see a tunnel. What I did see in that flash, and for me it all took a very long time, what did show itself as a kind of display here past me, was my whole life from birth with all the experiences up to that moment. And then you think that's nice. Gosh, oh yeah, do you remember? Oh yes, ha ha. No, I could experience and feel all experiences reliving from myself, but also from the other side. Say like we're having a conversation right now. For example, my conversation can give you an experience. I could, at that moment, experience it. Also, in a road map. So when I kick you now, then I'll feel. When I'm sitting over there, the impact, the pain. While I would maybe would say, being a Satanist. Nice. No. And that was, in my case. If you may experience something, then that was the hell. And that, of course, had to do with the way I had lived. Because I raged like an animal and everything was allowed to break, and at the expense of everything and everyone. No affection with anything, a constant anger and hatred. Well, I knew that in that road map. So I got that too. I also got to know. How? A child. After, a man and a woman, say, committed the act of love, I have seen how a, a child arises out of nothingness. Wow. How life was literally woven and an embryo was created and developed further. And it all happened very quickly. So I feel like I've been away for a long time, but not earthly. It's only been a very short time, but I've had all those kinds of experiences. There may also be all kinds of experiences we can also discuss. But which I was only able to realize later in life and following years, which I also needed for recovery, first physically, but also emotionally, psychologically, processing trauma, returning home again, you know, to yourself, right? Reconnecting with yourself and your inner child, which you will step out of those bunkers, step by step, very scary, out of those bunkers. I have seen that near-death experience have made me where I am today. It was a touch. A first touch. Making me connect to real life. I also got to see what the effect of my past life has been. Because when I was in recovery. In several hospitals and clinics. In multiple. In the Netherlands, Belgium and Luxembourg. I was moved multiple times. I have at a certain point. That image of those effects I did. Judged myself. I have sentenced myself. The only thing I deserved was death. Then I started to collect medicines from the other people and finally said goodbye to this planet and this life. I really judged myself dead and acted accordingly. And then I woke up in a white environment with white jackets and I thought, where am I now? I was just in the operating theater. They had pumped me out. I couldn't die again. I had judged myself. Wow. I had judged myself. I see. It was really confrontating. And because I had judged myself and condemned myself to death, I was given life. I finally got eternal life. But that is another story. So that has in a nutshell, because we can fill ours with that, because there is so much more I have experienced and seen. When I was also walking through the forest today. So since then, through sensitivity, I can feel the energy of a tree. I can really experience what I experienced then in my walk. In modest form, but it's still there. It won't go away. So something really fundamental has changed in me. 
And later I discovered yes. But wait a minute. The whole Darwinism made no sense to me anymore. I saw the intellect behind the creations, so. So yes, it is clear to me that there is much more than we perceive. And I'm able to perceive it. So, um, you may be grateful for getting yes. this experience. Certainly. Yeah. It really, um, woke yes. you up. Also free from fear. Yeah. Fear free. You now have her experience, huh? There will be waiting for you when you'll leave your body. Yeah. You get a confrontation with yourself. Yeah. Yesterday, you also said, I'm not afraid to die. No, not at all. It's a party after because all. Because you are not going to die. No. That's what I you said. I end up in something much nicer. Can we create here too, by the way? I have found that out now. But then it was that. Yes, you're saying it with a little gag, right? While you're giving a lecture. But um, there is also a lot of depth in your stories. I have experienced that myself. Absolutely. You know where you're talking While about. While at first I couldn't even believe it. I couldn't believe it all at first then. Because I wanted to understand, still the ratio, the head. Then you get to the recognition and acknowledgement of testimonies. I then also read a book by a priest or a minister. He has been consulting science worldwide. So the operating theater people, whether they were willing to participate in an interview, including the one who had experienced it. So the clinical side and the experiential side. The clinical side says dead is dead, as dead as a doornail. But the other says, I have experienced all this. And by reading that kind of research, I came to peace and acceptance at some point. And that's also in the time that I went, eh, looking for. Gosh, what else would there be more on earth? So I mean, in the meaning of religions? So I, you know, I took the Torah. The Old Testament, the New Testament, the Quran. So I was going to read all the holy books and later also study them to see what's out there. It was new to me. Wow, did you do that on your own? Or yes, you because did. I didn't want to be influenced. Yeah. And I noticed very quickly that especially in the religious, that there is a huge amount of dogma by which the meaning of Love thy neighbor takes on a different content. Because that is then limited to the circle you belong to because everything else is dualistic. I thought, that's not right. I don't read that anywhere in that book, become a dualist. No, yeah, yeah. So I thought, no, wait a minute, I have to stay away from denominations, those conditionings, those programs. Something I had in my first life precisely in my program to know how to manipulate in masses. So I knew how the game worked, and I discovered that this was the same in the religious. So I thought, no, we have to stay away from this. We should. Yeah. Like. Unstained in that way. Absorb information. To know where this is all about. And. Then I discovered if from all those books I could make one contraction, then it was a good stewardship of all life. That is the mission we all have been given from creation. Please hear you have the whole creation. Take good care of it. A bit like us lending a car once. Or our house. Take care of it a bit. Don't destroy it. Yeah. But we made a bit of a mess of it. That contraction was at a later stage for me. After 2010, I thought, here we are. Good stewardship of life, that is what United People Foundation, the foundation, should stand for. Then, in one fell swoop, you have the whole game. Aha, uh -huh. nice. A creator of all life. There are at least 70% of the population on earth who in some way somehow acknowledge and recognize that there is a creator of all life. Add to that a good stewardship of all life, which was our mission. We were also allowed to name everything. We were allowed to name everything. We could also do it again. So that's how I started then, much later, having also done those studies. But there was much more to those studies. Yeah, that's that new world. That. 
which you and we together are granted to work on. Absolutely. The new world. No one else is going to do it either. Okay. No. No, but we are all inside a bus shelter for a very long time. First this person will do it. Then eventually that person will do it. Then there is Gasara and Nesra. Now we have that. That banking again they also mentioned yesterday. That QFS. Quantum financial system. You get all thrown to death with lollipops. But nothing comes of it. We have to do it ourselves. Yeah. So that was just a bit about the near-death experience. I see. And also, um, how you ended up in theology. And the spiritual I really wanted to start right. understanding things. Very good. I really wanted to understand Apart things. Apart from religions, um, we can condemn a lot of institutes, and sometimes rightfully so. But if we go to the core... Yes, but the point is... The annoying thing about the situation is actually... That the people who are within a denomination are generally all pure. Pure in their beliefs. Pure in their personal faith. Only yes you know. Often people want to belong to something anyway. And people feel at home somewhere. And then accept the rules of the house. I experienced that too because when I was quite into that theology I thought. I'm going speech shopping. So I once went to a mosque. To a synagogue. To Messianic Jews. Because that's different too. Christianity, all those denominations, and yes, everywhere I went there were house rules. I get it when the house rules are about don't throw stones through the windows. Don't set fire to the place. I get all that. Don't get drunk. But they also had house rules in their belief system. What they had understood about faith, and then also claimed to be the only real truth within the group. So those others don't get it. They don't understand it yet. They are not that far. So I saw all that happening over and over again. And then I thought, but oh wait a minute. In the time of Satanism, I also saw at the Roman Catholics a Pope was created. And that Pope is the connection between the creator of all life and the people here on earth. He mediates, so to speak. And without that church and without that Pope, there is no contact. A few years ago, the Pope even said that he disapproved of people making direct contact with Jesus, for example, with the King. Out of the question, you see a mechanism being put in between and you see that everywhere. So I think, yes, wait a moment, there is just a direct connection possible and that's done for us. That was done 2,000 years ago. Everything was then breached by a carpenter. So I saw all that and I saw all that division and everyone has that truth. And then I thought, no, I shouldn't be there. It can never be intended that way either. Very nice. Yes. The pyramidal structure. There In too. institutes, right? Also there. So indeed you see that pyramidal. Oh, that's another nice shot for the people who want to make mince me out of me again. He showed the sign of the pyramid. They all do it. Just look with the eye and blah blah blah. It makes me laugh so much. But now I find myself hearing them already. No. But it is indeed all that pyramid. Pyramidal structure. And we don't need it, isn't it? Not at all. It is the other way around. I see. We have to turn him around. Because Satan. Because it really exists. That was his earthly name because it was a light bearer. It was the darling. It was Lucifer the bearer of light. Friends with everyone. But then came man. And they were higher placed for that became the sons and daughters of the very highest. Yes, that's when things went wrong. That's when war came. But Satan, yes. Who has turned everything around here on earth. And we can reverse that pyramidal. And we can do creation from the source. Yes. Yeah.
You also have a very clear vision at the difference between good and evil. Yes. And also, you're pointing it out. It's a very clearly. Yes, yes, of course I got lucky by first being very angry myself and being very hateful, and therefore on an, on an earthly level to have been allowed to meet the depths of evil within myself, but also outside myself. Yes, which is why yesterday after the break I stressed it one more time with, with extra emphasis, anyway. Do not underestimate what is going on now and how demonic and ruthless that system is. Even for the people who now think they are securing themselves. So the people who now participate in a totally global control system through all kinds of mechanisms, digital mechanisms that now join in as a vassal and think then I will secure myself and my family. I promise them right now that they will be cheated because everything is replaceable and if they don't believe that then they should look back into the history of dictatorship for example look at hitler's model and how many of his servants from the beginning to the end died because they fell from grace they weren't needed anymore the system is brutal without feeling just like a computer like a robot it slaughters and I did highlight that yesterday after the break. Because that is so underestimated, and that's because man himself, most people don't have that in them at all. So they can't imagine and acknowledge it. They are kind. Which is difficult. Yeah. To accept it. But I really, um, knowingly gone through it all myself. I chose it very consciously. It was my driving force, full of hatred and anger, to carry out that destruction, which is now imminent. But I'm out. Good to hear. Yesterday, you also said, the Satanists are following the Bible. Yes. And you were pointing to Revelation 13. The mark of the beast. You would not be able to buy or sell, without the mark placed on your hand or your head. Yes, yes. I found it striking to hear it from you, because you know, um, because you know the whole financial system. So, um, you see what will come at us. Yes, of course, I used to be very participated in that destruction. I was at the heart of the snake's head. I did assignments for that because that's that pyramidal system in which the golden triangle sits at the top with those eight to eight and a half thousand people at the time. And, as an atheist, I could do a lot of things that were remote, because you're talking about the 1990s, for example, and then to this time. Then you're talking 30 years down the road anyway. And I found a lot of those things insane. Like in 30 years, what are you talking about? that whole roadmap, and they were the very ones, because it's not just about the little reference I made yesterday. It is about the book of Daniel, and the book of Revelations, and particularly in the book of Revelations, they said so themselves, that that was a rewritten book that eventually only was recognized in Catholicism. After 400 to be included in the canon. Later I started doing some research of what are you guys talking about, for they as Satanists literally followed the revelations of the Bible. They are fulfilling those. They take revelations more seriously than any Christian or anyone else. But I thought that was all bullshit at the time. That was science fiction to me. But everything I heard then did stick. And in my new life, in my new consciousness, I began to combine things. Like, oh, but wait a minute, that was then. And that's happened now. And that's coming up now. I started with the prior knowledge I had, very easily. Seeing and understanding things? From what I know now, there is also a bit of inspiration there. 
because not everything is mine because I also get hunches just like everyone else. I sometimes see things. We'll call that. That struck me. I had an idea. We dismiss it as nothing but we are being communicated with. You accept it. You do something with it or not. I do something with it. And that piece I was talking about yesterday was very much about that the rich and the poor, the big and the small, will eventually be able to buy and sell. Within a system? Without. The mark. The number of the beast. The name of the beast. There may well be metaphorical expressions in that, imagery in it. The mechanisms in the deepest are, of course, also very clear. So you get a code, and with that code you have access to a system. And that system ensures that you can fully participate in life within that system. Is it to serve yourself from a bank account? Is it to get sick care or health care much nicer? Or to travel? Or to vote through a digital counter? Or do your tax return or whatever? Access to life. And in Revelations it is literally described from that time. But yes, it's what I say. The Catholics, the scholars of Scripture began in the years 313 to 335, to compile the canon of the Bible. Nicaea. Yes, from the Bible. That's what they started putting together. And that was under Emperor Constantine. It was Mother Helena who said, you have to do that to make the union of state and, and religion. So, in those days, the book of Revelations, even then, was simply described, dismissed as satanic because it had been rewritten by a paganist slash satanist. And it was only later in, in 400 that it finally was accepted also within the Catholic faith. And that was because the Catholic faith also turned to their new god. The god of the skies. That's Satan. And oh, that's going to kick up dust again but then do your own research. Don't go to Netflix, but research history. How did things originate? And, you can't fool me, by saying, the Romanist, in the history, was serving the creator of all life. Don't tell me. I know what happened to the Cathars. Okay? It was even so with the encirclement of a city that the commander said, slaughter them all because it includes Catholics. Slaughter them all. God will pick out ours. I have not forgotten about the conquest of America. The slaughters, all in the name of. That's not the God I'm talking about. So, somewhere the coin is flipped. And that is not about the people that is the annoying part of this story. All people who are into Catholicism are often very sincere and very pure. Even pious. But it's that head that has it all wrong again. And that's unfortunate. I'm going to say something anyway. It just has to be said once. When our Pope, our new Pope, took office, I think in 2014, but it may have been a year earlier, sometime around that time, I think I was just out of Malta then. The first pieces he wrote about this world, those were incredibly positive. He fully exposed the evil. I thought, wow, now we get a Pope who is going to turn everything around. Then we wrote him a letter. And through relationships in the network, through Malta, we have been able to hand over the letter in person through his secretary. And the secretary was our observer. To see. How or what. I wrote him a letter inviting him to embrace our new manifestations so we could do what he had written. Because he really had written it. The devil of these systems. He described everything perfectly. He knew purely what was going on. 
so I thought wow now things are going to change. That whole Roman Catholic history is coming to an end. It becomes the light. The light manifestation as it was meant to be. So I wrote a letter. I still have it. He read it. He even laughed about it. And normally he gives it back to his secretary with the instruction thank you for the note. Or I don't have time or whatever. Or an invitation. But now he sat down and put the letter past him like this and I never heard anything more about it, nor from the bishops or anyone else. Nor does the observer know what was going on inside him. He did have a choice. He did have the choice. To use the words he wrote himself. Of world peace. To wipe out the satanic of this world. He didn't take that chance. His choice. He is going to face it. Because the creator is watching as well. He also gets that film. I don't begrudge him, but it could be hell. That has long been on the tip of my tongue, and I think I'll just throw it out now. It's, you know, it's done with that old world. They all should for a moment return to their selves. Because all of them will be under the judgment. Or they should take a different route that I took. Ha! Because there is. Yeah. That one is there too. The new Adam is here. Certainly. We spoiled the first Adam and Eve. And the second Adam has come and restored everything through which we are a new person. I have been baptized. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I, I read in that theology, you know, a story about a chamberlain. And he went back to Egypt and he was hitchhiking, even then. And he got on the cart with an apostle, a follower of King Jeshua. And he was so excited about that whole story. He was like, oh, what do I have to do to be saved? Ah, E. He stepped on the cart's brake. Over here, the water. I thought it was so beautiful. The old man went under the water. That was then baptism. And the new man came up. I thought, wow, I want to experience that too. So beautiful. So lovely. Not only metaphorically, but also in real life. Because when you do, your whole life changes. That is your testimony here on earth. With me too. I went underwater and within eight weeks my whole life was turned upside down. None of everything I had planned, ha, was still standing. Well, no, ha, I had to go on the run. Nothing I had left. Nice to know, yeah. Yeah. No, but people really need to start looking at soul level at their own households and what they all do in life. In this age... That has been going on for 2,000 years. If you die, you don't die. You'll get self-confrontation. You will go to judge yourself. There is something within that peace that leaves you completely naked. Transparent you can't hide anymore. You start judging yourself because you you can't avoid it. It's impossible to avoid it. And that turns out badly for most people. Especially as the hidden also comes to the surface. What has been playing in the depths of you all, and that is not to make it tough, to scare you. No, you now have the chance to come clean, to reconnect with the source of life. And of course we are imperfect here on earth, and of course we make mistakes daily, but at least come into relationship restoration. For me, it is a father. Because in that respect I have had bad experiences with fathers on earth. For me it is a father, but for someone else it is something else. It's about connecting to the source, to the core, what created us. It is not for nothing that they said, let it be us, making people like ourselves. Mirror, mirror, mirror. It's all simple in that respect. Now for me because I have lived through many experiences. But really I'm calling for you to go back to the depths of yourself for once. Wants to start reflecting on what quality of life do I actually have? In whatever form do I love myself? Because that is the highest commandment. Love the source of life. Love your fellow human being. The way you love yourself. But that last one we are completely rid of. Is also deliberate. As long as we don't get in touch with ourselves and not consider ourselves either. That's all in the program. 
This are very important things, though. We don't have to spend a year sitting on a mountain meditating. No, you really can insert moments in your daily life to achieve that reflection and inspiration to get the connection going. Because sooner or later you're going to and and because I come from that old world and have also experienced that so extremely, is this especially also for such a pope and especially for all those vassals who are now in league with Satan. There is no need, they can all choose every day. Say stop. Because when people say stop, that incorporeal power no longer has access on earth. I've said this before. If all people stop to be a channel for evil, then we will have world peace right away. Then we will immediately have prosperity and well-being worldwide. Because we don't allow it anymore. Because it was already broken 2,000 years ago, but we still maintain it. No one else. So don't say, yes, but it's that one or it's that one. It's Satan. It's that one. No. We. We should take full responsibility for life here on this planet. For each other, with each other and for ourselves. We have been appointed for good management. We have to do it. Beautiful. Yes. It is necessary. Yes. That other train goes on. Very nice. It makes me speechless. Can we enjoy the scenery? Yeah. Very nice. The... The soulfulness. The character. From which you do your trajectory, sir, is, um... Sir wise. is on holiday. Just say you. I'm fully admiring that you are doing this project from a certain spirituality. And I think that is the thing that helps you, that helps you work it through. Absolutely. The pressure and, um, Absolutely. resistance. If it's only me. In the fourth. I mean, I call this the fourth dimensional. Because I am take not only length, width, and height, but also the time factor that we all made up. The four-dimensional body, so to say, the physical body. But from all these experiences, I have long since experienced it. If you behold this while not in your body, you also have a heavenly body. So you're talking about multiple dimensions anyway. In total, there are 13 dimensions. It's 13 layers and... If you know you are a spiritual being... Then it is very incomplete that you only manifest yourself as, as material, while constantly having a ha flow of daily connection, signals, hunches, it's something. When I had to go here, I was well on time. I drive off. I had prepared everything very carefully, thought of everything and packed. I drive out of the village. And I just hear, you forgot your costume. Oh no, I didn't even check. I had to pack so much you forget what you did. I turned around. I went back. What are you doing here? Yes, I was told I forgot my suit. Everyone laughs. So where is that suit? Had I hidden it behind a door? So I had never seen it. But that's what I mean in everyday life. But you have to be open to it. Because if, as people also dismiss me as a fantasist and liar, he is out of his mind, that's comfortable for them, right? You don't have to change. If I do the same, all the time? Oh, what a twaddle. What do you mean by forgot my suit? I will see it when I arrive, I know I packed it, right? Yes, I would have looked different. That doesn't matter. But I wanted to be neat. I wanted to dress neatly out of respect for people. Sometimes, we ignore those signals that come from above. Yeah, yeah, me too. And that's a pity. Me too, and then my mind says again, on nonsense and all that. And then later on. In Belgium, they would say, damn. Like, if I only had listened. It can be so much easier in that interaction. Because yes, that I discovered prayer in the beginning too. Yes, it started as an experiment. And, later... It became a dialogue. Scared me to death hearing a voice for the first time. It is then very much like your own voice but much more powerful. But also much more loving than your own voice but still recognition. 
Some call it your inner voice. Yes, then when all that occurs and you start eventually accept that as a reality, then it also has the opportunity to come. So, yes, in that sense it has become a part of my life. It's written all over your face too. Oh yes? Or is it because I see you? No, but also during your lectures. People are saying, Well, if Ronald is speaking, it's inspired. Yeah. Yeah. It's right from the heart. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And That's I think, recovery. Um, yes, those things made you very soft. Gives a good feeling. Yeah. Yes, I sometimes say, God has taken up residence in my heart. There is his seat, I allowed. That is possible for everyone, of course. The carpenter arranged that for us, say the travel agent. He did have to suffer for it, but anyway. It was done out of love. Unconditional love. I wouldn't be that crackpot, mind you, to send my own son to earth. To be born to all those people here. Boy, what a hopeless story. They won't anyway. So far, no. The masses, well, no. They just go on to the pit, to the ravine. I think that's a waste. If you then have a creator who loves everybody, everybody except nobody, and only wants to be in communion with each other, like in paradise. But we've messed that up too. But if that is there now, and you even give your son for that, I wouldn't. Pooh. If that is indescribable, you do something like that for human beings. And you thereby pave the way for all to come home and really start manifesting as sons and daughters. Because we are so enormous. We don't know half the things we can do. Should we loosen up, we do need to be in communion with each other as a body. They also call it the body of Christ. Has nothing to do with churches. Difficult stuff for people though. Resistance. Yesterday, you also spoke about, we are the sons and daughters of the highest. Absolutely. Surely that is a wonderful honor, Thadam, that you know. Let's shout. That you know when someone says, right, fathers and mothers sometimes say that too, sounds very flat. Let's make a baby. But surely in Genesis, in the first books, it said that too, let's make babies. To keep it simplistic. Then I still have a father, and then I have a mother after all. Then I have parents after all. Then I am a son after all. Then you are a daughter after all. Why must we be less? Surely we have been given that honor. So why do we have to linger in all these conditioning from birth that we are nothing? And then we have to develop an ego to prove that we are something. While we all already are, then we are in that lie anyway. This is not necessary at all. All we have to do is stand. It is given to all of us. Wonderful, yes. Fear free. Yay. And, um, what about the Noah's Ark? The financial ark? Yeah. Or the real one? No, but, um, it's also a symbol, right? Right. During those days, people were also, um, yeah, they were in a bad system too, right? And mm -hmm. God took them out of there. Yeah. So, um. Yes, but of course there was. Look. Noah and his family who were going to build a boat who of course were also declared crazy. I believe he spent 40 years building it before it was finished. But it had to be so big that of every species, of all life, a male and a female had to go with it. And the people, well, we know how it went. They didn't care about anything. They were all fantasists. So is it with me. Let it go. Yes, then it started raining and it didn't stop and nobody had a swimming belt, so most of them drowned. But one of the foundations of this game is, that is at the time that, when the fallen angels began to have community with their women of the earth, DNA changed as a result. Giants emerged because it was about changing DNA. And changing the DNA was the sign to fully initiate this. After all, you were sitting on the building blocks of the original creation of us humans. 
which was destroyed by the change in DNA, by the fallen angels. Because we have experienced a few things in recent years that at least hold the potential, at least according to science. Science which has brought this out en masse in recent years, but was suppressed by social media and other channels. I did listen to that, and also went to visit some of them. They clearly explained what happened in the last year also through MNRA technology, that this has the potential to change DNA. If that is true, then we are in that same boat for the second time. Then I thought, um, okay? Okay, we are on the repeat. The promise of drowning no longer comes, so the judgment does. Let's throw in Noah's financial ark, because that's the only way we'll get out. Otherwise, it's done again. Because it's done, it's done someday. And if I am to believe the old powers I worked in, they were always talking about their deadline was 2028. 2028, I thought are you guys really out of your minds? Totally absurd. But by now I know that this is the time frame. By 2028, they aim to have finished their manifestations, so we are completely in a demonic system from which we cannot get out, and that the slaughter, i.e. clearing humanity, is in full swing. For destruction is coming. Only a select few remain on earth. Of course, that sounds terrifying. But I say it anyway, because I can also say nothing and just let it happen but it's still good for people to know in advance that something truly devastating is coming. I also briefly mentioned in another interview cited that the Georgia Guidestones had been initiated by a Mr. Christiani. The licenses, the permits with the municipality to build in Georgia to build a large colossal monument, the new Ten Commandments, and it said at the top first line, to reduce humanity to the level of half a billion people. It stood there for a very long time. But that gentleman does not exist at all, okay? And yet he got the permit through the municipality to build the monument. And in an interview I briefly talked about that, with an image of the guidestones and, and where they are going, their blueprint, and they show it all in advance, only no one takes it seriously. I had only just told them, and a few weeks later the monument was blown up. Ploof gone. No more evidence anyway. So, Bizarre, um, isn't it? They did that on purpose. According to you. Yeah. I find it bizarre. It's all coincidences. But, um... I used to be the one who joined the club. And when I got my real bosses from the Golden Pyramid, I still entered there as a young overachiever with the intention of destroying everything. They said... We are not going to do that, Ronald. There are people enough, which we can continue with. Select, but we go on. I thought they were sissies. I thought they were wimps. Why so? Everything must be broken. Later, through the experiences with my colleagues, the new world, I also felt like no, not everyone has to leave. It's fine. So much later when I also discovered the Georgia Guidestones, then I understood. So a lot has only fallen into place later in my life. And, and I refuse, to care even a little, of what people think of me. Because what is at stake is far too important and transcendent. Let the children come to me. I hear that so often and I see it's getting more and more urgent. I am only getting more determined good. Well done. Yeah, it's necessary. Let the children come to me. Nice one. Absolutely. That's the assignment. That goes beyond age, right? Because the inner child is also there until you die. After that, you still have all kinds of chances. You can still choose. It's not that it's then, but you do go through all sorts of things. In any case, just be prepared for your death. I even don't want to think of it. 
that you would end up in a place where you don't want to be. Cause there are places in the affer life where you can experience non-stop. What you have done, you can also choose to. That's hell. It is not a burning fire because then you can say, if hell is a burning fire it saves on heating costs, right? Nice and warm, but that is not hell. It is your own creation, your own experiential creation that you are going through. You can continue that, well you want to get out of there. And then what? Will you go to the king then? It's possible, you can still get out. But many are going to refuse. Turning away from the light. It cannot be imagined. That is also a choice. There is a second death. We eventually enter a phase where the second death based on our own choice is going to enter. Then you are no longer there. Nowhere anymore. Then you are erased, deleted. Do you want to? It's possible. Some people are longing for it. I don't. I think many with me don't. I think we all, secretly like, want to live with quality of life. I think so. In essence, I think very few want to. With each other. Course in unconditional love seems like a fun challenge for the future. Unconditional love? Let's get that course on the program soon. When the basics are in place. Unconditional love. It makes me think of the return. The profit you're aiming for. Oh, that yeah. you're aiming for. Being the bee of joy. Oh yeah? The financial. The ecological. That's the admiring. The financial part is the story of Noah's Ark that right. you've had prepared. The ecological. So admiring the nature. But as well, the emotional. The social and the transitional well-being. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and then if you read it from top to bottom, then you have created party for everyone. It's like a, yeah, a new heaven, a new earth. Absolutely, absolutely. You wish to build. Yes, absolutely. I think that is the mission of every sincere person, every righteous person. We secretly want it all gone, but we don't know how. We often feel powerless, frustrated. That's why you need that cooperative, that body, that body shaping itself. And yes, I once started that with my wife, and we created the child, and it then became the blueprint for Be of Joy. Later on, it was manifested in United People Foundation, a foundation. So I was donating all the intellectual property into a foundation. It was no longer mine either. All for man, for the child. And we all want that actually, all of us. So... By creating the tools, based on all my experiences, but now for the better, that service tools were coming. Yeah, that was that financial system I was talking about first, with the hand at that belly of pregnancy, that formed along the way, and yes, that took quite a while, especially from being human, it all has to be quick. I was also used to a project you start, and two and a half years later you can roughly tell if it is healthy and if it has a chance or not. But yeah, I did forget that we now began with worldwide transformation of a whole world and that that's quite a job that is kinda impossible. Nevertheless, precisely from the cosmic help, the spiritual help, also from the source of life, of everything cooperating on earth, forming a team of volunteers who, in addition to jobs, studies, and unpaid all started carrying it as a result a collective is already emerging where many people besides me are committed. I mean, it's incredible how much effort is already being done by so many volunteers so it's already in the early adopters. It's already moving in the manifestation direction. If you then look at what we showed yesterday, the URA platform with the URA coin, I have them here with me because you have to carry money anyway. The URA currency, the cash, that's our freedom. Yes, that is already operating and that is growing and growing. Um, already in several countries by now. It is global, 
already in 210 countries. But in the Netherlands, Belgium it is growing. Now in Germany, France, and even in Spain. So in those languages too. And it expands and it expands. It is a very basic fundamental mechanism for creating that new world. That is already operational and is already being used by people and is growing. But of course we also understand that in such a transition where you start focusing fully on that new world as you want to see it, you do that through money, right? You invest no more in wars, no more in diseases and nothing more of that at all just beautiful positive thing, then we really understand in such a transition you should not end up in a parallel society, but rather an interaction with the old one, because in the old there are also a lot of good things you can use, so you also should be able to maintain the connection, and not everyone is participating, so from that new world you are also a guest in the old world through another tool we are developing, that's B of Joy Services, in which there is a money exchange office, where you can exchange the URA back to euros or dollars, but also from your own cooperative entity. Okay? That will be a European cooperative, in which you can also manage your own IBAN bank account number. Then you don't need the old banks anymore, because you have it yourself. And you also have a debit card for the places where you can therefore no longer pay with cash at the moment. We can be very difficult about that or make it easy on ourselves and as guests. Well, you know, it's none of my business anyway in the world of the mark of the beast. Because you won't have to participate in that later on as that digital identity. The QR code, the smartphone, and the central bank digital currency as those three. Four-dimensional cage closes around you and cash is gone in those systems you shouldn't be in there anymore if you don't want to start wearing the mark of the beast. Because you get a mark. It is a spiritual mark. So if you still want to communicate with that, you want to stay connected, then you should be able to act as guest. Also, over there. And then you have an IBAN account number and a debit card and a money exchange office to use your new money to also be in the old world. Even if it is with a CBDC exchange, you are there as a guest. If they say you must do this and that otherwise we will shut you down. Oh, how so do we shut you down? We have our own IBAN, our own debit card. What are you meddling with? So what do you want to close down? You are a guest. This is a mechanism I had to live in for a very long time after I was discharged from hospital and could no longer live in this world. Then I had to live completely anonymously in this world, but I had to be able to guess use systems. That's how I developed that for myself then and learned and I use it again now. That you can be completely open to also that digital cage that all these people are in. Cause as long as if we keep the connection. In the transition. And they'll see how we are doing. Then that is attractive. And people come to an understanding. And say we want that too. So a lot of people will come over afterwards to the new world, who are now staying put. Certainly. Some people don't realize they're in that cage. No, not at all. Because it is also all done on the basis of convenience. It is so darn easy and I've seen it happen. It started in the Netherlands with a citizen slave number, BSN number, a fiscal number, and how that eventually became your personal number, and you couldn't do anything without that number that started already. Then came the debit cash card, while there used to be the pay packets. You saw the first phones coming, a big heavy battery. Later, it became a mobile phone, it became a smartphone, the debit card went into the smartphone. You can already pay like this. Contactless. The action is already coming in. Plop, plop plop. Soon a chip plop. Plop. There are already many people in Sweden and other countries already participating in it. Paying on the train plop with a chip in it. Just a small grain of rice in the palm of your hand. You can see how it forms based on convenience. You open your door with it. You open everything with it. So it's not yes what nonsense. No it is already happening worldwide. People choose it themselves out of convenience. It's safe. You can't lose it either. 
Lose your keys anymore. All those bank cards, all those codes, it's all annoying. You get sucked right in and don't realize it. It's like boiled frog syndrome. You put the pan on the fire frog in it. It's nice and cold. Fire up and in time it starts boiling and the frog dies. And that's what happens. Or it jumps out of it. Yes, that's also a possibility. Yes, those are then. The people who make me happy. The rest just give me sadness. Well, yeah, we can end it with a call-up, an invitation, to join the project, to step into Noah's Ark and... Noah's Financial Ark. And, yes, um, everyone is free to choose, of course. Yeah, but we all need each other, right? Yes, but what happened at the core? That is if you peel off everything that was needed, because of course we knew how this was going to end. If people do not choose otherwise... And what we have established with the team over all these years is that we have created a realistic, feasible option. That if you don't see it there anymore in that prison, that digital cage, because you can only buy so much bread or they will charge CO2 tax. All the misery you don't want that that choice option is there. So that there is a choice of option because there is nothing worse than being in a gas chamber, so to speak, and there is no more door to open. Because then you choke. Eventually you choke. And I say it heavily. But they never shied away from, from killing people. And now it's going massive. It's not a fun ending. It's a new beginning. Because all of us can turn around. And the choice of option that is available right now, created by the team, the name says it all, united people. Connecting of persons. They can start making a difference on earth. It is all in our own hands. Beautiful end. Thank you so much. You too.